I want, if you would, this afternoon, turn with me to the book of John in chapter 14. And uh, Lord, help me this afternoon. I left this morning, and uh, I don't want to share much on this. I don't want to give a recap, but, you know, I just really felt like coming in to this morning's service uh, with that word from this morning, that it's something I see so many people deal with. And it seems like there is just this heaviness, this weariness that is upon the church. Uh, I don't know if, you know, if it's just something that I see uh, at this particular season, uh, and I say season the last couple of years, or if this is just something I'm just starting to recognize, but it looks like it has really magnified itself here in these last couple of years. And this is a very critical time. Uh, we're living in a very unusual time. And I want us to understand that our help comes from the Lord. And the renewing of strength comes from him. Amen. And I want you to know, I want you to be in prayer for me and for not just particularly this ministry, but for the ministries uh, that God stir us up. God, re revive us, re-strengthen us. There's something that goes just, just stirring on the inside of me. And, we're, and I can't stress that we are at a very critical time. Um, and we're here to proclaim the gospel, the power of the gospel. The book of John in chapter 14, I'm going to share a few minutes on this thought. Uh, we're going to have a baptism following this service, so when we get ready to close this service out, I want you to hang around with me for a few minutes. In the book of John in chapter 14, I want to read from verse 12. This is one of these verses that growing up in church that sometimes it really brought discussion of how can this be. And uh, verily, verily, he's just grabbing your attention. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. I just want to stop here just one second because I want to go back and say something, that if your Bible is written in red, this is the uh, Lord speaking here at this time. And so he said, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father." And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you, keep my, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. And he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray, God, for your anointing to rest upon us here this afternoon. Lord, let our eyes and let our hearts be open. Lord, may the Spirit of God stir us up, Lord, awaken us to this time that we're in. And Lord, to the greatness, God, that you have placed, uh, the great calling that you have placed upon us, and the great power that you have placed within us. Lord, let your word move here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. When growing up in church, this verse 12 was always one of them things that brought conversation in Sunday school. And it was the, would be the topic 
of how can this be? That Jesus would make a statement that if you believe on me, the works that I do, and that you shall do also. But he did not only stop there. He also said greater works than these shall you do. And so when we looked at this, we probably look at a lot of it. And if you read this verse, and if you read it not in light of the power of the Holy Spirit, you're always going to be confounded by how can this be? Because there's no way possible for you to be able to do the works of Christ, the, the mission that he has placed upon you, and even to reach a greater scale than he did without the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you look at Jesus, I think that he is referring to a particular calling, a particular uh, calling that he has placed upon our life, and maybe we could refer to it as a commission, because the commission to me and you is to go into the world and share the gospel and teach and preach and baptize. This is what he has given us. So when we look, begin to look, he says, these works shall you do. And you look at the works that Jesus done and the sharing and the mighty transformation and speaking into people's lives. But then he says greater works. And I like to look at this right here. I don't think that this is referring to something as the quality of works as much as the quantity of works. That now what the work of Jesus was doing was contained to a specific area, but he has now given us the authority and the power to carry this same word, not into a particular area, but into the whole world. And this is what he was speaking into the life of the disciples. He says, you're going to see greater things than you have seen just here in this limited time that you have been with me. And, the, and, the, and if, you're, if you separate or if you go back to the teaching in the, in the book of Acts and about how we didn't even know whether there even be a Holy Ghost. And if you don't know about the power of the Holy Ghost, you will always be confounded, not with just his scripture, but the work in which he's called us to do. We will always be puzzled of, of maybe using these words, how can this be? How can this be possible? How can we achieve this? How can we move forward without the power of the Holy Spirit? And it is impossible to do the work of God outside of the power of God. We got to let this get sunk down inside of our spirit. For me to be able to accomplish that which God has called me to do, I must be filled and empowered with the Holy Spirit. It is impossible. The church, we got to grab a hold of this. Or if not, we will always sit around and just talk about maybe what God has done, but never make reference to what he is doing. One of the words, I'm going to say this, and I've said this before. I, I think it's a sad testimony. Not that I think, don't think that we ought to hear your testimony about what God has done. But if everything that you have is what God has done, I want to know what he is doing. Because God is not a has-been. He is an all-time God that is moving in our lives today. And he is empowering us. So when it's separated from the, what I would call the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know nothing about this, like the, the, the people there in Ephesus, we don't even know whether there even be a Holy Ghost. Well, if you don't know about this, you're going to always be left powerless. Always going to be uh, powerless in your calling, not being effective in your calling. There's always going to be that sense of intimidation or um, in being timid. I cannot do this. I cannot move forward in this because it's not possible. And I'm going to say this before. I want to say it in a way that I'm going to grab your attention because when we look at what God's calling is upon our life, the thing he's called us to, we may look and say, well, this is impossible. And I would always like to tell you this. 
you're right and you're wrong. Because any time when you look at the calling of God and its magnitude, yes, you can, if you're looking at it within your strength, within your ability, and just your own talent, it is going to be impossible. But we also know this. He said that what is impossible with man, because if we're just looking within ourselves, we're just looking in the strength of man. But, but he says what is impossible with man is possible with, I wish y'all would help me out here, with God. And so the, 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 through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have now been empowered for the calling and the mission that God has placed upon us. Oh, let us be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Oh, as the old folks, let us be empowered by the Holy Ghost. Oh, maybe that word won't scare you. <laughs> New generation, a little bit scared of that word. <laughs> Not so much of the Holy Spirit, but don't make mention of We're talking about the power of the Holy Ghost moving in our life, empowering us for the calling, for the mission that he has called us to, and that is to carry the gospel. I'm going to share this right here because this verse here in, verse, in John 14 in verse 12, when he is referencing to the power of the abiding presence of the Holy Ghost within the believer's life. Let me just go back in. He is, he is making reference here. Because he's saying, I'm going, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send a comforter unto you. We find out later that John spoke of him as the promise of the Father. We find out later that Luke made mention of him as the one that has come to empower power us. We find out as he jumps into the book of Acts in chapter 1 he said and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So this verse here in verse 12 is making reference to the abiding presence the abiding power of the Holy Spirit and let me share it this way that makes the mission that makes the calling, that makes the purpose possible. Amen? Somebody say amen. Help me out here. Amen. I, want you, I want to say one more thing. I want, to use, I want to just share one more little thought here on this. You are a vessel, a conduit. Now, this message is not about me and it's not about you. We're not the subject of the message. Are you with me? We're not the sub. All we are is a vessel, a conduit, just a, a means by which to carry this powerful message with a powerful promise. Let me go back and say this one more time. I say it sometime, I'm going to shout it out, but I'm already pretty loud. This is a powerful message with a powerful promise. I said, this is a powerful, we are a, we are a vessel carrying a powerful message with a powerful promise. Oh, the power of the Holy Spirit proclaiming through me and you the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which brings transformation. This transforms communities, towns, cities, families. Oh, he said it is the power. Amen. You remember, I can't help. I'm going to go back just a second. Can I go back just a few days? He said this. He said when we got to the book of John and also to the book of Luke in chapter 24 and verse 49, you shall receive Y'all help me out. This ain't y'all's first time hearing this. He said, when you get to the book of Acts, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Luke said, you shall be endued, mean to be clothed in. Amen. It's something that is not only on you, it's in you. Anybody with me? Dynamite power. We use the word the, the translated from the word dudamus. I just like that. I like the way it just rolls off your tongue. 
dynamite, dynamo, and how it is just contained, sitting there waiting to explode. And so when you get back to the gospel, Paul said in the book of Romans, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power, the dynamite, the explosive power of God to move mountains, to transform towns, cities, communities, and families. This is the power of God. This is the message that the Holy Spirit has empowered us to declare. Amen. Transformation power. And this is what he is saying here in this. We are just a vessel, a conduit. The way that something flows. Let me stop right here and just, just take a step or two back just for a second. If God is, now God can do anything he wants to do. Just somebody say yes. But I want you to just stay with me right here. But God has chosen you to be the vessel which he carries this gospel. I want you to grab a hold of this. He can do anything he wants to do. But he's chosen you to be the vessel to carry this message. This powerful message. This powerful gospel. He's chosen us to do this. And I'm just going to take it one more step further. Unless an angel of the Lord... And unless God deals with somebody through dreams and visions, he has put it into your hands to share this powerful message. Oh, if you had the cure for some bad disease, you wouldn't mind sending out and telling somebody. But I want to tell you where death has set in and it's beginning to take control. He says, you've got the answer. You've got the cure for this. And what would it be, Pastor? If you don't know by now, you need to come back to our teaching. It's the power of the gospel to bring resurrection power unto lives. All the things that were dead, raising them back up. Oh, anybody ever been brought back to life? Oh, that I was dead in my trespasses and sin, but I was, have been raised to new life. Some of y'all can testify the power of the gospel. Don't you want your friends to be able to have what you have, to experience what you got, where you are that vessel that God has chosen to bring this message into their life? The power of the gospel. Sitting around a kitchen table just a couple of days ago, I said, I'm sitting down talking with my dad and my mom and one or, maybe my son was in there and we was talking about this. I said, let me tell you this. Somehow or another, we've got all off base. And this is, the, this is a really critical issue that we're having within the American church. Y'all stay with me here just a second. I told my dad, I said, Dad, somehow or another, the house of God has got to turn back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I said, because she's sitting up in a pulpit and telling somebody about three steps to a better you is not going to get it. Because you can't become a better you in your own power. I need the power of God. Are you with me? You, we can't sit up here and talk about what happened and read some stories from the newspaper because there's no power there. We may can educate people. We may can bring intellect to them. But we're not going to be able to produce. Their power is not going to come. The only way they can be resurrected from death unto life is through the power of the gospel. Whew. And it's amazing because... Also this, the Holy Spirit shows up where the Christ is being magnified. This is his job. Amen. God has chosen me and you to be that vessel, to be the conduit of just bringing the power of the message. Remember this. Me and you are carrying a powerful message with a powerful promise. Amen. You've got a powerful message with a powerful 
promise. Now, when we look back at the power of the Holy Spirit, God not has only in, 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 the, in our calling and our purpose, God has not only given us the Holy Ghost, but he has also left us records, examples of what the Holy Ghost done in the first church. And somebody's asking, well, we're talking about the first church. I'm talking about going to the book of Acts and finding out when the power of the Holy Ghost was poured out upon these disciples and just reading the Acts of the Apostles, and you're going to find out what the power of the Holy Ghost was doing in fragile and mere men just like me and you who have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're not just, he just not, uh, he's given us an example. We, we've, got a, we've got a testimony of what the Holy Ghost does in the life of believers. There's a whole book that's just set aside just for this. Oh, talking about what the Holy Ghost has done. I don't want to get off too far on this. But we read the other night on, in the book of Acts in chapter 3. And this is what, when they come to the man at the gate, beautiful, y'all remember this? There was something interesting. I just really want you to grab a hold to it. I, uh, I think it's in Acts chapter 3 and in verse 12. I didn't have this prepared, but I think this is where it's at. That where, where the man was raised up and strength was restored unto him, and everybody's just... I mean, pandemoniums broke out. A, a man they hadn't seen walk, a man they haven't seen move much unless somebody carried him. All of a sudden, now this man is leaping and he's praising the Lord. And Peter says something very interesting here. He says, why look ye upon us? If by our own power or our own holiness, this man is walking. In other words, Peter's saying, this ain't got nothing to do with me. It's all got to do with the power of God that's just working through me. I have just become the vessel. <laughs> I just become the vessel that God is using. And I want to tell you this, God will use you if you would just submit yourself to say, Lord, I'm the vessel. Oh, I want you to grab a hold of this. Now, some people may be, disagree with me on this, but I'd sit down and talk with you. Some people would say, no, look, he ain't not going to use you. Peter said it was not by his own power or his own holiness that the Spirit of God was using him. He said, I just presented myself, and God said, when well, you're available, I'm going to use you. Amen. My Lord. And I'm going to tell you, you know what he's looking for today? Availability. Is anybody with me? He's not looking, we're sitting around thinking that God is waiting for me to achieve a certain height of greatness and you're not going to do it. He's sitting around waiting for me to get to a certain place and me to get certain educated on certain things. I'm not saying them are not bad, them are not bad. Them are good things for you to have. But I'm telling you, God is just really waiting for availability. Is anybody with me? God just said, I just need somebody who loves me that will make themselves present and just say, here I am, Lord, use me. Like Isaiah said, Lord, here I am, use me. Do something in my life. Use me, Lord. I'm just that vessel. Because what we're relying on or what we should be relying on is the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of God. You cannot accomplish the purpose of God without the power of God. Amen. Y'all with me tonight? Y'all bear with me. I didn't know I was going to go all this, but I do want to share something else, okay? Let me share this thought with you. I cannot stress this enough. And, and let me, I think I shared this today. I was trying to just give myself a defense. You know what I mean? Maybe no preacher ever done this. But you know, I said, you know, if you hear something 
And you think, here this preacher going, he's preaching back on the Holy Ghost again. I done heard it 15 times. I'm thinking to myself, you ain't got it yet. Because when you start to hear something, and when it's down in your spirit, it just starts to stir it up in there. And I done heard him preach on it 15 times, but something just done got stirring up inside of me. And I'm saying, preacher, preach it one more time. <laughs> Tell that story one more time. I was thinking the other day, Carrie or Terry might have sent this to me. Reaching this generation X need to be returned back to just a simplicity. And I know some preachers that feel this way. Oh, we've heard that story many times. I'm like, if you have heard the story of the gospel and you're thinking, I've heard this, this is a, I've heard this many times, you maybe need to hear it again. Because when the power of the gospel, no matter how many times you hear it, it's just something that stirs up on the inside of you. Amen. Let me just share this story. I'm getting off base right here just a second. My wife can testify to this. No matter how many times you tell me you want to go eat pizza, I'm not going to say you want to eat boring pizza again. I'm going to say I'm ready for it. <laughs> Is anybody with me? And there ought to be something about when you start to hear the gospel that just stirs us up. And I'm telling you, this day, this time, and this hour, there has been a generation, it's Generation Z, they have heard everything in the world but the power of the gospel. The explosive gospel. All the things, I'm fixing to shift gears and I'm going to go to this final thing. God did not bring you. You are not where you're at by accident. You did, as bad as it may seem, you have not been through all that you have been through by accident. Now I'm going to share something else before I go into this. You might have been through some of that stuff by bad decisions. Now, stay with me here, okay? Stay with me. But I do understand that even in the midst of my bad decisions, if allowed, God can work all things out. And so even in the midst of your bad decision, your bad lifestyle from the past, if allowed, God is taking them things and working them in your life to a better you. And he has brought, you did not come through all that you come through by accident. God has used every event in your life for purpose for his kingdom. Every. Now, sometimes we don't allow that because now we're just so hurt, we're so broken, and we, we, we just die never getting over what we've been through. Oh, my. Just never get over it. Still holding grudges. and No, God cannot use that. God cannot use that until you now submit unto his authority. Now, you know the reason I know this? Because I've been there as well as you have. And I'm not saying there ain't been bad things happen in my life. I didn't like them. I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't like them. Amen. There's probably been things that happened to you that did not turn out good. It did not taste good to you. And you just did not like it. And it really left a bitter taste in your mouth. Amen. 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 But I'm telling you, if you will allow God, he can take them events that you've been through and take them and work them. Oh, that you have now become a better vessel for the oil to flow through. Amen. Oh, is anybody with me? Amen. Am I in the right house? Amen. And sometimes, I want to tell you, it takes a long time. And I want to say this, and I was thinking about this this afternoon. Because I've been through some events in my life. I've shared some of my testimonies. And I just really was in a place of dis just really disappointment. But as I stand here today, I will tell you. Lord, I am a better man today and a better vessel that the gospel can work through today than I was 10 years ago. And I'm hoping when 10 years more pass by, I'm going to say, Lord, I'm even a better vessel today. Amen. Do you see what I mean? But just allowing him to work all things Amen. together for his good to them who are called according to his purpose. 
I don't know about you, but maybe some of y'all like me. I just turned 55. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I want to be preaching the gospel at 75. The Lord just leaves. Lead. I tell you, I still want to be running around. You know what I mean? I still want to be in, 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 just moving like I am today. And maybe not tripping over this cord here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some of y'all seen that this morning because y'all took that cord up under that speaker for me. <laughs> <laughs> I come in the, I come in tonight and I walked up and I said I said, took that cord up under that speaker right there for me. Cause I'd have tripped on it two times this morning. <laughs> Some of y'all thought the Holy Ghost done got all over me. I was just trying to hold my balance. And <laughs> I, I, I'm praying, God just use me. The events in our lives have allowed. For us to be that vessel that God was looking for. And I go all the way back to this. I'm going to close here just a minute. Y'all still with me? All through the Bible, whenever God called a man, he immediately began preparing that man for what he was going to do in his life in light of his calling. You could say this, I've been prepared for a time such as this. Amen. Amen. All that you've been, been through has prepared you for this time. For this time. For this season. And we can never, Lord help me here. We can never look back even in the midst of, Lord help me. In the midst of God's calling upon our life, especially when we know we've, we've embraced or we know this calling, that any time that we let our age begin to disqualify us from that calling. And there's a reason I'm saying this. Because I'm, I'm around a couple of pastor friends of mine sitting on up in age. And we always make reference to, well, I'm not able to do. And there's some things you can't do physically. But I'm going to tell you, if your voice is still strong, you can still declare the gospel. Because the power is in that. I said the power is in that. You with me? The power is in the gospel. Not that you can still jump. And dance and run, even though you want to run sometimes and jump and dance. The power is in the gospel. Amen. So we find out in Abraham's life, God started working on this man. I'm going to tell you, we find out with him that a walk of 25 years, that now that faith is starting to really develop in his life. And not only his, but also in his wife, Sarah. Because you find out the start where God told him, said, I'm going to make a great nation out of you. And I'm going to give you a son. And the first thing he done was look within himself. He said, because there's no way for me able to produce a son. And so he looked outside of the power of God. You with me here? And you see that he had Ishmael. But the Lord told him, said, that ain't, what I, that ain't what I promised you. I'm going to give you a son with you and Sarah. How can this be? And Sarah starts to laugh within herself. I don't know how this can be. Well, you got to remember what is impossible with man is possible with God. Amen. Do you see this picture? Amen. And we find out later, I like this. We find out later in the book of Hebrews in chapter 11. I like this. Sarah said, I judged God. And I found him faithful. I like that. She said, I've judged him. You know what that means? I just examined him. I checked him out. He told me what was going to happen and I laughed. But here I was nine months later. Giving birth to the promise in which he told me. And I've examined him, and he is faithful. Amen. We find this right. Y'all hang with me. 
We find out Moses spent 40 years on the backside of a wilderness. God had told him, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you to bring Israel out of Egypt. I'm up for the calling. Matter of fact, I just take it in my own hands right now. And they threatened to kill him. Say, so, hey, you the one that's been, you know, what you going to do, kill us too? They, they, they come back, you know the story. He goes and leaves and spends 40 years in the backside of a wilderness. And I'm probably thinking to myself, because I've been there where Moses is at. Lord, I thought you was going to be, I thought I was going to be a deliverer. I thought you was going to use me as a vessel to be that deliverer. He says, I am, but there's some stuff in you that you're not qualified to do this at this point. <laughs> is anybody with me? He said, I am going to use you, but we got to get some of this stuff out of you first. He said, you're going to spend 40 years on the backside of this wilderness, but all of a sudden he sings a bush burning. Do you see where I'm coming from? And then we look at Joseph. Joseph was the man who had the dream. And he told his brothers, he says, I'm going to rule over y'all. Brothers got jealous about it. And I, I know he probably, I don't know if he had this plan for his life. And he saw in the dream it, that it was going to turn out this way or this was the route that God was going to carry him. But you do remember Joseph said, hey, I'm going to rule over you. I, I had a dream. And said, so y'all was bound before me. And I was the ruler over y'all. And next thing we know, them, them brothers of his, done got him and throwed him in a pit. And I'm pretty sure that he didn't expect the dream to turn out this way. Is anybody with me? I'm pretty sure the whole time that he's leaving the pit and being sold to the Midianites and he gets down to Potiphar's house. And now he's the ruler over Potiphar's stuff. And I'm thinking maybe he is now having in some insight. Hey, maybe this is what I'm called to do. But all of a sudden now there's been an uh, accusation against him and he finds himself in prison. Well, maybe this ain't the place I thought I was going to be in. Do you see where I'm coming from? And he goes from the prison and he goes from the prison. He goes from the pit to the Potiphar's house to the prison to the palace. It took some time. Do you see this? And you thought God didn't know what he was doing when he called, carried you into the pit. You didn't think he knew what he was doing when he had you in the prison. But he was just moving him from one step to the other. Said, I've got a place I'm carrying you. And I'm preparing this vessel to be a vessel that I can work with. Amen. Amen. So the things that you have been through, God has been preparing you for a purpose. Amen. You are a vessel with a powerful message, with a powerful promise. Amen. I want you to stand your feet here this afternoon. Glory to God. God has been doing a work in their life. Uh, Amy's life and Kevin. God has been doing a mighty work in their life. Amen. And I just praise God for y'all. Amy, upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.